Hi, I'm Mel, and I am Choosy. My ultimate skin goal is gusto kong mag-even out ang skin tone ko. Hi, my name is Gian Enwada. My skin goals are to become whiter, fairer, healthier, and younger. It really shows na yung skin ko ngayon mas moisturized, mas glowing, and mas healthy. Thanks to Glutasy, I got my skin tone back. Thank you so much, Glutasy. Every coffee needs a lotus. What's the secret to beauty's beauty? Langis. Ito ba lahat ang gamit mo? Ay hindi. Isa lang ang gamit ko for all. Moringa O2 Therapy Oil. Hindi lang malunggay. Meron ding olive oil and omega from sunflower oil. This therapy oil helps relieve my dry and irritated skin. It helps lighten my scars and stretch marks. It helps make my hair young and healthy. This is our beauty secret. Sana all. Sana all. <laughs>
Nandito ako nang nagpa-practice magbike ang anak ko. Nandito ako nung nag-birthday si mommy. Dito ako nag-celebrate ng wedding anniversary namin. Distance will always be a problem. So choose a home that makes life more fulfilling by bringing you closer to everything that matters the most. Arezzo Place Passing. Live fulfilled. Finma Properties. Making room to build your future.
Hi, I'm Mel, and I am Choosy. My ultimate skin goal is gusto kong mag-even out ang skin tone ko. Hi, my name is Gian Enwada. My skin goals are to become whiter, fairer, healthier, and younger. It really shows na yung skin ko ngayon mas moisturized, mas glowing, and mas healthy. Thanks to Glutasy, I got my skin tone back. Thank you so much, Glutasy. Every coffee needs a lotus. What's the secret to beauty's beauty? Langis. Ito ba lahat ang gamit mo? Ay hindi. Isa lang ang gamit ko for all. Moringa O2 Therapy Oil. Hindi lang malunggay. Meron ding olive oil and omega from sunflower oil. This therapy oil helps relieve my dry and irritated skin. It helps lighten my scars and stretch marks. It helps make my hair young and healthy. This is our beauty secret. Sana all. Sana all. <laughs>
Nandito ako nang nagpa-practice magbike ang anak ko. Nandito ako nung nag-birthday si mommy. Dito ako nag-celebrate ng wedding anniversary namin. Distance will always be a problem. So choose a home that makes life more fulfilling by bringing you closer to everything that matters the most. Arezzo Place Passing. Live fulfilled. Finma Properties. Making room to build your future.
Hi, I'm Mel, and I am Choosy. My ultimate skin goal is gusto kong mag-even out ang skin tone ko. Hi, my name is Gian Enwada. My skin goals are to become whiter, fairer, healthier, and younger. really shows na yung skin ko ngayon mas moisturized, mas glowing, and mas healthy. Thanks to Glutasy, I got my skin tone back. Thank you so much, Glutasy. Every coffee needs a lotus. What's the secret to beauty's beauty? Langis. Ito ba lahat ang gamit mo? Ay hindi. Isa lang ang gamit ko for all. Moringa O2 Therapy Oil. Hindi lang malunggay. Meron ding olive oil and omega from sunflower oil. This therapy oil helps relieve my dry and irritated skin. It helps lighten my scars and stretch marks. It helps make my hair young and healthy. This is our beauty secret. Sana all. Sana oil. <laughs>
live. A wonderful Wednesday to each and every one of you. Good afternoon to our Zoom participants and also good afternoon to our FB live uh, YouTube and LinkedIn viewers. It's another live webinar series for our cause powered by Ariba Academy. And our topic this afternoon is transformations through growth mindset, learning and thriving through challenges. My name is Irish Malanda, and later I will be joined by Mr. Hawa Mabalot as our moderator. So please allow me to acknowledge first our out-of-the-country participants, and they are watching from Chennai, India, Pitaling Jaya, Malaysia, Doha, Qatar, Singapore, Sharjah, United Arab Emirates, and Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And please allow me as well to thank our major sponsor, Pacific Cross Philippines. This is, and they are a leading provider of medical plans in the Philippines. And they are hashtag here for you to protect what is most precious to you. Pacific Cross offers a wide range of health benefits, such as coverage per hospital confinement, outpatient treatment, emergencies, viral illnesses, including COVID-19, among many others. Send them an email via info at pacificcross.com.ph. Again, it's info at pacificcross.com.ph, okay? And in order for us to have a smooth flow of our e-learning session, here are the house rules. We would like to know who are first-time viewers of our webinar. Please type in hi in the chat box now. Okay, let's check. And for those of you who are our, our avid viewers, this is your second time, third time, fourth time to watch our webinar. Please type in hello. Okay, let's check. Welcome, Alvin Soriano, Fiona Bautista, Jai Malin, Antonio, Hershey, Jessica. Thank you. Hello, Miss Pasita. Antoinette or Tauste, okay. Elizabeth Rogelio Mirales, welcome. Emmanuel Catahan, hello. Hello there, sir. Okay, so far. And let's do our audio check. You will be needing a good quality headset. Please use the following codes. Type in 111 to show if you can hear me, if you can hear us loud and clear, and we are audible. So far, 111, Mark, Mary Ann, Evelyn, Andrade, thank you. Antonio Alvarado, Ritz Bernal, okay, Regine Sales, 111. Hello, Sir Howell, welcome back. Thank you for having me. PLDT is getting weird by the day, <laughs> and I'm happy to be back, Mom Iris. Okay, so far, Maria Daisy Bonagua, 111, loud and clear. Okay, so type in 222 to show if you cannot hear me. If you cannot hear us, no sound at all. 2121 means the sound is breaking or there's a log. And question mark if you don't understand anything. So far, Sir Howell, we're loud and clear. Okay. 111, 11111. Moving on, we will be having a quick break later after the pres presentation of our guest speaker and before we move on to our question and answer portion. Participants' microphones will be temporarily disabled by the administrator during discussion to avoid interruptions. Questions will be entertained after each topic of the session. For questions and clarifications during the provided time after each topic, please click the raise hand button for the administrator to enable the microphone for live questions. Yes, later in the question and answer portion, we will entertain live questions from our Zoom participants. Type in your questions at the Q&A box. Again, at the Q&A box, not in the chat box. One question at a time will be entertained. For comments and feedback, please scan this QR code. This will be directed to our feedback form. Please send us your comments, suggestions, topics to discuss in order for us to have a smooth flow of our e-learning session. Okay. And now, to discuss transformations through growth mindset, learning and thriving through challenges, Mr. Hawa Mabala, please introduce our speaker for this afternoon. Of course. Thank you, Ms. Irish. Am I getting across clearly? Is my sound 111? One, 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 one? Also, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Irish Malonda Samson, our ever-beautiful president. And... Uh, Yes, our speaker for today is a decorated HR practitioner 
with 25 years of HR experience with national, regional, and global leadership roles from different industry leaders, such as DHL, City, Globe, IBM, and Baker McKenzie. He has strong expertise in business partnership, talent management, organization development, and HR analytics. He is a certified MBTI and DDI facilitator and a certified strategic HR business partner. As an advocate of people analytics, engagement, and wellness, he has been a keynote speaker in many occasions in Asia and Europe. He is a pioneer in the shared services industry and was appointed the 2018 chair of the GICC HR Committee and the IBPAP Capability Building Committee. He is recognized and awarded Project Manager and People Leader. Among the awards he received are the Globe Excellence Award for Project Management, IBM HR Partnering for Project Time, PMAP's Exemplar Award for People Management, one of the Philippines' most talented HR leaders and one of the 100 Global HR Heroes by the HR World Congress. He is also recognized as one of the 100 Filipinos to follow on LinkedIn. Eric earned his degree from the University of the Philippines as the year's top psychology graduate. Eric also has postgraduate education from Ateneo, La Salle, Universidad Complutense de Madrid, and Universidad Politécnica de Madrid. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Eric Reyo de Dios. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon, Sir Eric. Yeah, am I coming in clear and my video is also crisp? One, one, one. Perfect. Both the video in. Thank you so much for that humbling introduction, Howell. And it's a great opportunity, especially in these times of crisis, that all of us in the HR community should actually gather together, listen to each other, be each other's strength, draw from each other's strength and experiences, and just uplift each other up because we in the HR profession actually has a privilege in working in HR, but it also at the same time a responsibility. So we don't take this responsibility very lightly. In fact, this is a very, uh, it's, a, it's a burden on our shoulders. We just have to carry and make sure that all of us are uplifted through the process and we will come out stronger than ever after this pandemic situation. And that's why we're excited to have you, Sir Harry. And I think this, this topic that uh, we have chosen, Howell, is very, very relevant in this day and age, such that what are the things that are bothering us? What is keeping us awake at night? What are the things that hopefully should not happen, but eventually we should prepare ourselves in the eventuality that things might happen? So all of these things are bothering us. We can't go out and you know, everybody's talking about the new normal without really knowing what the new normal is. And definitely it's all about change. And every change would be a struggle and it would force us to actually transform and be better than before. And, and with that note, how will I, I would like to invite us to actually view uh, the deck that we have, um, that we have uh, presented. So, and prepare okay. for us. So wow. if, uh, if you can see how, uh, could you just give me a quick check whether you can see clearly the presentation? In the presentation day. is crisp and clear and inspiring, seeing that beautiful butterfly. Thank you, Howell. I, and thank you so much for pointing that out. In fact, I, cho I have chosen this image just to emphasize the topic that we have this afternoon. It is all about transformation, Howell. And just like, you know, as you know, it's, it, it, it's sort of an old school analogy, Howell, but, but please indulge me. We go through a process of transformation and it's filled with paths of struggle. It's not easy. Sometimes you have to shed your own skin. There will be some physical changes, mental, spiritual. But lo and behold, after all of those struggles and transformation and changes, something beautiful will happen. And that's why I invite and enjoin everyone to actually put that heart of transformation uh, in, uh, in, uh, in us and put that growth mindset as well on the top of our head. And, you know, 
I, I, I think we will just try to be stronger and things will be better. And, you know, when the, when the, the, the road gets rough, the tough gets going, right? So I guess that's, that's what we have to do moving forward. So it's transformation through growth mindset. And what do we exactly want to cover in this topic this afternoon, Howell? So I had in mind the first topic is, uh, well, even before the topic, that's a noisy background. Uh, that's the waterfall in Singapore. That's right, Howell. And thanks for pointing that out. And why I particularly have chosen Singapore as our image to start off our discussion is, and you know, many of you have gone to Singapore. And in fact, Howell, you are very familiar with this. You in fact have, yeah. have, have named, oh, almost named it. It is the indoor waterfall called the Jewel at the Changi International Airport, which is actually in Singapore, as you have mentioned. You know, 30, 50 years ago, what can you say about Singapore, Howell? I don't know if you have been there about 50 years ago, maybe well, not. 50 years ago, I saw documentaries about it and, and how pitiful and uh, dry the, the, that mole of a land. It's a mole of a land. Yeah. It's a beautiful, dry land. But if we go back to Singapore now, how would you describe Singapore, Howell? The most expensive city in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is polished. It's well gardened. It's manicured. It's immaculate. It's, you know, it's the cosmopolitan city uh, of the world right now. And you yes. know, before we are saying that the most expensive cities are found in, in Switzerland, whether that is Zurich or Geneva, mm. very expensive. But lo and behold, uh, you know, five years ago, we already have Hong Kong and Singapore as the most expensive cities in the world. And, and you know, it's also a sign of progress. Uh, how well, it's not just, you know, the expense and cost of it. But with that, of course, comes your technology advancement. Yes. Most of the hubs of the global and regional uh, operations are already in Singapore, for example. And look at the transformation. And it all started with a clear vision. So, you know, if that could happen to a country, how much more could that happen to a person, to a corporation? So let's just keep on inspiring each other. And hopefully we'll be able to cover in an hour or so you know, we will revisit growth mindset. There's a lot of talk about growth mindset. And for most of us who are in this call, this is not your first time to be hearing growth mindset. But sometimes in the cacophony of things, as we talk about growth mindset, there are nuances and sometimes uh, cover the authenticity and the integrity of the meaning of growth mindset. So we will try to revisit growth mindset and hopefully we'll have an operating point of view and how do we approach and attack this concept moving forward, at least in our discussion. The second point, Howell, is what is its role in transformation? Why is growth mindset important in any transformation, maybe from a personal perspective, a relational perspective, and even a corporate perspective? So we will try to see the elements that are at play there and hopefully we'll have some takeaways as well. And with those takeaways, you know, we don't want to leave all things from a theoretical perspective. We don't want it to be just a mindset. A mindset should cause us into action and action should cause us to transform and change. And at the end of the day, if there is just one takeaway that causes our participants to take action, to improve, and that would be a catalyst for transformation. I think how well our time spent here would have been worthwhile. I agree. I couldn't agree more. So with that in mind, uh, let me just try to move on and press forward. And just to set a bit of context, because I want to understand what is the mindset as well of our audience uh, participating in this afternoon's discussion. So talking about mindset, I have some questions here, not necessarily questions, but statements. And depending on how our audience would respond to those statements, we would somehow try to, in a very crude and rustic manner, try to mimic uh, what Dr. Carol S. Dweck actually did in her lifetime of experimentation and research. 
So maybe just a background, and I think this is a good time to have that context in mind how all of these are theories and started in an academic setting. So how, um, if I may, may I ask you, where did you graduate? Which, which not, not necessarily university, but, but a high school uh, or uh, university or preparatory? In high school, it's a state college in Lukban, Quezon. Wonderful, wonderful. It's great because, you know, it does not, it does not really depend on where you started. It's, it's really more about where you're ending, especially in our concept of growth mindset so look van keson and you know and, and let me just tell you a story about myself as well because when i was in high school i i graduated from uh, a, a very um modest school so we call um, i'm a graduate of kapit bahayan elementary school i don't know whether you would uh recognize that so it's a it's a small elementary school in nabotas and, and of course, uh, it's, it's, it's where most of the communities would go because it's near their place. Mm -hmm. um, and then I transferred to uh, St. James Academy, which is a private school, and then on to University of the Philippines. So what's the relevance of that in our discussion in Carol Dweck's study of the mindset? So what she did is people graduating from, for example, in Lokban Quezon mm -hmm. would have some sort of uh, uh, grouping. So I came from St. James Academy, you came from Lukban. So regardless of where we came from, we are grouped in three different sets. The first set would be your control set, meaning uh, you, you don't necessarily introduce anything new there. So it all is status quo. The first set is where we will introduce our theory of the growth mindset, where people are actually prepped in their mind that their effort, their focus on work, their focus on uh, working hard would eventually dictate what will happen to them in the university and when they graduate from the university. So the success in terms of graduating, getting honors will be measured later on. Thus, group B would be provided a mindset that Hey, Howell, you are the valedictorian coming from Lukban. Mm -hmm. You are so good. You're so talented. Mm -hmm. You're very smart. Your IQ is 150. It is at a genius level. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you will be successful in college. So that is the kind of mindset that Carol Dweck prepared those students, as opposed to those students that are focusing on effort, focusing on hard work, and on the control set, they did not do anything just to make sure that when we test them, uh, we will know whether it is comparable to the group A or group B. And lo and behold, after, let's just say, four years of, of study, those that were focused on working hard, those that were focused on effort-based uh, and motivation, actually were more successful in terms of grade, in terms of getting the awards, honors, and so on and so forth, as opposed to those who, didn't, who were eventually mentioned as valedictorian, geniuses, and whatnot, were less in terms of achievement, in terms of our general average. And this is significant and actually more comparable with a, with a control group. They saw, they saw that the group A, which is focused on growth mindset, succeeded significantly better than either of the two groups. So that is the start of all of this talk about the theory of the growth mindset, which right now actually transcended even beyond the academic milieu, right? So it's beyond academe now. We can now apply it on a personal perspective, on a relational perspective, and even on a corporate perspective. So with that, <laughs> that's a big introduction, Howell, and I hope that people are still listening. I know that this is one of the unholiest hours of the day. Uh, so let me just wake you up by inviting you to respond to our first poll or to our first survey. So okay. our first survey, our first poll would say, there's a statement, if you read it correctly, if you work really hard, you can actually make yourself an expert. Okay, dear Zoom participants, please, uh, well, answer the poll question, the first poll question. 
Do you strongly agree? A. B. Do you agree? C. Neutral. D. Disagree. Or E. Strongly disagree if uh, about the question working really hard can actually make you an expert. We're excited to find out right. what the result will be. Mm -hmm. There's still a, a bit of movement and we are seeing about 59% responses. So maybe when we reach 70, we're, we'll be good and just say so, that we're, we're there. Okay, the poll question usually lasts uh, 60 seconds, Sir Eric. Yeah. That's the, the automatic time for the release of result. But on your end, there you what go. do you see? Okay. Yes, so this is, this is what I see, Howell. We see that for most of our participants, it's about 48%. It's B, most of them agree and followed by 39% strongly agreeing with bits and pieces falling into the neutral. And there's also four people saying that they disagree. All right. So this provides us the concept of effort at work. And most of our participants actually believe that when you exert effort, you can make a difference in terms of your ability or your capability. So let's just set that aside. So at least we know the, the temperament and the context of our audience on the first question. May I call on the next question to be posted? Uh, so poll number two. Poll number, number two states that you believe or I believe that abilities or capabilities are not set and can still be significantly developed. So the operational word there is significantly developed. Okay, Zoom participants, type in your answer. Do you strongly agree? Do you agree? Are you neutral about it? Do you disagree? Do you strongly disagree about you believing that your abilities are not set yet and can still be significantly developed. So how's the movement, Sir Eric? The movement is very interesting. As opposed to the first question, there is a lot of tendency uh, from our participants to strongly agree in wow. this statement. Uh, in this case, I, I think uh, it states a bit, a bit the flexibility. I know we will discuss this a bit more later, but just a preview. You know that you know from an infancy stage, we mm -hmm. sort of were advised or we were informed that at a certain age things become things become a bit more rigid and cast uh, and when you reach about 30 your mental ability is more or less cast already and mm. there's little flexibility in terms of improving or changing um, so let's see uh, from a scientific point of view how is that panning along? Is it still true now? What are the new evidences or researches that would point us whether there is still malleability, so to speak, or flexibility in terms of our mental and organic capability? So, so it seems that this, the vast majority of these mm -hmm. participants uh, are leaning towards strongly agreeing. Yes, almost, I mean... If you will include the degree, it's 99%. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, it's a, it's, it's a good indicator, uh, Howell. So for the last question or statement, the third polling statement says, I or you would like to take on new assignments so you can be stretched and learn new things. Okay, participants, same goes with... Uh... Poll question number three, A to E, do you strongly agree? Do you agree? Neutral, do you disagree or strongly disagree about you liking to take on new assignments so uh -huh. you can be stretched and, learning new thing, and learn new things? I'm not sure if the operative word here is stretched or learn new things. We'll find out when... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So, okay. you know, so this is from a context of you are allowed and you have the time and capability mm. to do so. Um, so when things are in the right place, would you be accepting additional responsibility so you'll be stretched and you will learn something new? So let's find out. So there you go. Wow.
So again, strongly agreeing that, you know, uh, I, I know our HR participants are raring to go to take on new <laughs> and exciting things, not, not only for themselves, but also for the people that they serve. And it's a good indicator how well of how dedicated our HR community is to their profession and to their professional development as well. So all in all, that's that's a good that's a good preview, and I have a better sensing now of what is the more or less the mindset of our audience, Howell, and 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 I think I'm in good company as far as what I'm seeing from the results. I strongly agree with you, and the results. <laughs> one of, one of, so it's a, it's a good start, and it gets a good context for every one of us. It sets the tone. Uh, so with that. Uh, I would like to move on to the next uh, uh, segment of our slide there. So, so there you go. So I just summarized the different polls here. So let me just uh, take out this part, play it again. All right, so for those of you who are interested, this is just a summary of mm -hmm. the questions that we have actually responded to. And I'm happy to share uh, the deck uh, to you, uh, just reach out to me directly if necessary. Wow. So all in all, uh, I just want to summarize what we have uh, uh, talked about earlier on, just, just, to, just to summarize this whole book into just one mm -hmm. statement and for us to have a good takeaway. So growth mindset is all about the belief or the theory that ability or capability can be developed through effort and by embracing challenge. So again, ability can be developed through effort and embracing of challenge. I know it's kind of oversimplification. So let me just expound a bit more by providing some elements of the growth mindset. So as you can see, the first question is all about effort. And we also talked about the definition of growth mindset of focusing on effort. So it's all about effort. There has to be an element of effort. How will we talked about malleability? We said that, do you believe that you can still improve your ability slash capability even when you are 60 years old? Mm -hmm. So there is definitely a lot of studies about that. So prior to, you know, and, and, you, and, and thank you for the introduction because I did graduate uh, from the Department of Psychology from UP Diliman. And there's a lot of study about child development. And the focus there is, and I don't know whether we have changed that, but there is a strong discipline or a school of thought that believes that certain flexibility or malleability of the brain actually yes. stops after a certain period of time. Mm. So let's just say 25 years old to 30. And after that, there is very minimal, minimal change in terms of the development of your brain. And thus we equate that to, will you still be able to adopt new learning? New, will you be able to translate new experiences into actual capability? So, and that's the old adage where the old adage came from, you know, you can't uh, train uh, teach old dogs new tricks. new tricks. Yes. So is that still relevant right now? And I'm sure how will you know Albert Einstein? We all do. We all do. We all do. So, you know, there's, there seems to be a bit of misconception. And we all know that Albert Einstein, uh, you know, coined the theory of relativity. Relativity. Right? EMC square. <laughs> yes, precisely. EME equals EMC M square. That's right. And then, and then we know that he's a genius, right? He's a physicist. And the theory of relativity was started by him. And actually, uh, came, he brought that to life. But the reality is, he struggled even the early days of yes. his schooling, right? And we will not necessarily say that he is conventionally smart. And as we also probably, if you would read his biography, as he went through his more mature age, mm. and when did he actually develop his theory of relativity? Not during his 25 or 30 years old, definitely during the time when he is more mature. And when they studied the brain of Albert Einstein, it is not because he has 
more neurons mm -hmm. than the average person or human being, it is because he has more connections or connectors between his neurons. Wow. And most of those connections actually were developed during the latter stage of his life, not in the early stages of his life. So it goes to show that our brains and us can still change even from a physiological perspective. Even the brain can still develop even at the ripe age, at the mature age. And lo and behold, even Pablo Picasso, when did he create his masterpieces? When did Leonardo da Vinci paint the Mona Lisa? Definitely not during his early 30s, not during his late 20s, right? So it goes to show that there is still malleability, strong inclination with the recent theories, with the recent researches, that the brain can still change, that we can still improve, and that will result in greater capabilities and greater abilities. And that's why we're focusing on effort and we're focusing on malleability from the concept of the growth mindset. Continuous improvement. So many of you said that you, know, you would like to take on assignments so you can also learn and improve. It's all about continuous improvement. So this is a very dynamic mindset that I am proposing and inviting us to really look into because this is, as opposed to something that is just a glimpse or a snapshot of a certain point in time at a certain period, you are looking at a journey. Because Howell, I am not judging you based on your IQ test right now. I am judging you based on what you will achieve from now until the next point in time. Did you improve from this baseline moving on? And we will know more about that because there are certain concepts or elements of the fixed mindset that really hinders us from growing as opposed to the growth mindset. And so I've been talking you know, on and on. So let me just invite you to view again another video that somehow would provide us another good summary and set the tone for the theories of a fixed mindset versus the growth mindset. So video, please play on. Researcher and professor Carol Dweck uses the term mindset to describe the way people think about ability and talent. Dweck delineates between two different mindsets that exist on a continuum. The first is the fixed mindset, which suggests that your abilities are innate and unchangeable. The second is a growth mindset, which views it as something you can improve through practice. In a fixed mindset, you view failure as permanent, but with a growth mindset, you see failure as a chance to learn and even pivot. Those with a fixed mindset are more likely to view critical feedback as a personal attack, while those with a growth mindset will see it as a chance to improve, where they can develop new systems. With a fixed mindset, you're more likely to choose easier tasks and put in minimal effort. After all, if talent is fixed, why bother improving? Why even try? But with a growth mindset, you're more likely to embrace challenging tasks and work hard to improve. Those with a fixed mindset are likely to give up when they face an obstacle. Meanwhile, those with a growth mindset will view obstacles as a chance to experiment and solve problems. In a fixed mindset, the focus is on measurable accomplishments. But with a growth mindset, the focus is more on a journey of continual improvement. With a fixed mindset, you're less likely to take creative risks. But with a growth mindset, creative risks are simply a way to innovate and improve. Ultimately, your mindset influences everything from creative risk taking to how you view feedback to whether or not you finish difficult tasks. And in the end, it's one of the greatest factors in determining whether or not you grow and improve in your abilities.
So I do hope that you have some takeaways there, Howell, because yes. that is our concept. So I don't, I will not necessarily go through very intricately mm -hmm. into the details of that, but I do have a, an invitation for us to focus on this slide because this somehow summarizes whatever uh, that the, the announcer in that video actually uh, mentioned and covered. So this is just a summary of all of those concepts that we have uh, listened to earlier on. So fixed versus growth mindset. And, you know, I would just like to say how well that, you know, maybe let's just take away intelligence. Let's just say it's ability or capability because it applies not only to intelligence, but your overall capability and as a performer in the office as well. So let me just very quickly go through this, uh, Howell, if, if I may. Um, yes, so we said that, you know, for the fixed mindset, we avoid challenges. And why do we avoid challenges? Because when you are said, Howell, you are the smartest person in this classroom, chances are for you to preserve that title or that label you would shy away from anything that would make you look otherwise, especially when you are looking at a new challenging situation that you're not familiar with. And then people would view you as you, I thought Howell is the smartest person here. So that is the concept. Whereas the growth mindset would actually focus on trying to learn and would be excited to try out new things because it is something that would add on to their experience that later on they can use uh, potentially in work, in life, in their relationship. And because we easily give up due to obstacles because of the fixed mindset, but for the growth mindset, we persist despite obstacles because it is just part of the learning curve, so to speak. If you are the smartest person here, Howell, why would you exert an effort? You are already the smartest person, right? So why would you do anything that would prove otherwise? And, you know, if I am not the smartest person, but if I am said to be the hardest working person, I would focus even more effort so as I will be able to master things. And that is the growth mindset for you. How about for feedback from an organizational setup? <laughs> the growth mindset is largely more attuned to where we want to be from a corporate standpoint. We want to have a coaching, a nurturing, uh, a mentoring organization. That would not happen if all of us would have a fixed mindset where people would shy away from constructive feedback because they will view it as something that is opposing what they believe of themselves. I, I graduated as valedictorian of my university, and now you're telling me that I am not good? How can that be? Versus a person who is uh, very open. How can I improve more? How could I learn? And how could I do things better? That is the kind of person that hopefully, how old we want to be in our team. We want to be in our corporation. And as opposed to a fixed mindset, many of the people and actually the CEOs and the chairmen of, of organization who are focused on the fixed mindset thought of themselves as the hero, the superstar, the savior of the organization. This organization has been successful because of my effort, because of me. As opposed to leaders who are wearing the growth mindset they are actually more vulnerable, more authentic, more listening to the people, and they're not afraid to show their feelings. They're not afraid to show their failures because they are human beings and they are learning much like anyone else in the organization. So I think there are some thoughts here that we really have to digest and also to make sure as HR practitioners, what is the kind of mindset and how do we adopt this in building the culture of our organization. And definitely when we talk about transformation, where transformation would thrive? Is it in the fixed or in the growth mindset? So that is more of a rhetorical question, actually. But I, I guess, you know, we all know where this is heading. So 
as, as I mentioned earlier, because there are, you know, you know, Dr. Dweck's study has been here for about 20 years or so. There have been some changes and there are also transformation in the way that it is being translated and interpreted. And I like the way some recent interpretation also uh, came about. So from the fixed mindset, it's all about the now. I took a test in IQ and the result is 125, which means I'm, I have a superior IQ and I'm a superior human being, for example. And I will carry that label moving forward. I am superior and I don't want to listen to everyone. Versus the concept of not yet. And it's a great thing because... Um, Carol Dweck actually spoke at the University of Chicago, and she was surprised when she realized that there is a scoring or a grading system uh, of the Chicago University. But before I proceed, how uh, in the University of the Philippines, our grading system is from one to five. So one being the highest, mm -hmm. sobresaliente, according to Jose Rizal. Yeah, right? sobresaliente. And then we have five, meaning failure. And then we have four. Four for incomplete. Incomplete. And same, so same with Adams on your university where I took up computer engineering. Right. So, so and, and, one to five. And three is just you know, past. past. <laughs> so instead of saying that you have failed or five, instead of saying four, the University of Chicago has a grade of saying not yet. Not yet. Wow. I like and that. there is the power of saying not yet. Because you are not labeling the person mm -hmm. as a failure or number five, mm -hmm. which is, of course, just mask under the number five, which is essentially mm -hmm. fail, right? So they are trying to avoid labeling people as a failure or, su or a success because that okay. is just a snapshot of a certain point in time. My grade in Psych 101 does not define me as a person. Mm -hmm. And if I fail that, I should not be treated or labeled as a failure. So it's, it's a great thing because the thought there is, I am evol evolving. I might, mm. not have, I, I might not have passed this mm. time, but what is telling anyone that I will not pass in my next attempt? So that is, again, another view of the growth mindset. Because like it's, it's very impactful. When you focus, not because how well you're smart, but when you focus on attributing and motivating your children, for example, mm -hmm. I love the way that you study. It is very disciplined and you mm -hmm. put a lot of effort in studying. And I'm not surprised that you get high grades. Instead of just saying, you are a very smart kid. I, I have always known that you're smart. I'm not surprised that you get high grades. When your focus is not on the talent or the capability, and when your focus is on the action and effort, that is the difference between group B, group A, mm -hmm. and group B in Carol Dweck's study, right? And that also somehow tickles our brain on how do we now coach and mentor our people in the corporate setup. It is a destination when it comes to the fixed mindset, whereas it is a journey when it comes to a growth mindset. In mm. the fixed mindset, people are very particular about validation. I am smart, so you should not say that I am not. And I will not exert effort because I am smart, right? Why should I do it? Anyway, I'm already smart. Or why do I have to prove that I'm smart so I will not necessarily work on this project? Or maybe because out of fear of that project will invalidate whatever label he has put himself on. Versus a person who is learning is not afraid to take on risk, is not afraid to learn and take on challenges. So that's another view of summarizing all of those concepts going forward. So with all of these theories, let's just all simplify because <laughs> we cannot take away all of these things mm -hmm. after an hour or so of discussion. So maybe just believe, just, just highlight the bag theory. Belief mm -hmm. leads to action, which is A. B, belief leads to action, A, and then which leads to growth. This is your bag theory. Whatever you believe in, Howell, that would push you forward into action, and any action would bring you growth. 
as opposed to not taking any action at all. Yeah, that's true. Right? So, so believe in the bag theory. <laughs> bag is belief, action, and growth. So moving on, um, I know that uh, we're already at the half past the hour. So whenever there are challenges, as we are in right now, how how I know that you know for you personally and for some of the listeners and participants, this pandemic has affected us in a myriad of ways. There are many ways that this has changed. This pandemic has changed our way of life, our approach on things, and how we view ourselves. Some of us would be losing our jobs. Um, not hopefully not in this uh, mm. in our in our group. But we all know out there in the news, uh, uh, Victoria Court, BPI, uh, they are already uh, providing notices to their employees, and uh, and those are some of the more publicized. Uh, publicized events in terms of mm-hmm. retrenchment. Uh, and there are fewer publicized news, uh, and I'm sure there, are, there will be a lot more. So this is a time of challenge and struggle. This is a time of discomfort. But how do we view challenge? How do we view discomfort? How do you view struggle? Much like a butterfly shedding its own skin and having some physical wranglings and transformation, I'm sure it is painful and effortful but what do we have to do what is the mindset that would help us so one of the greatest uh women in in or powerful women in business uh and that is Jeannie rometti the previous president and chairman of ibm she said that growth and comfort will never coexist growth Mm. and comfort will never coexist so like if, if you feel that you are struggling, if you feel discomfort, maybe it means that you are growing or you be, are being set up for growth. So just take note of that for all of us who might be feeling a bit discomfort given this situation and transformation. So when, when there is belief, there is action, there is growth there is transformation so when there is growth there's better performance there is a better readiness so essentially these are the things that we have to hold on to and each brings each wave or each phase challenge brings transformation and transformation brings growth so why is it relevant howell in our day and age especially in this global pandemic why is it relevant to adopt a, a, a growth mindset First, is, is, it's quick to initiate action. And I don't know uh, about you, how if you have experienced um, some of the responses of, of, of the corporate world when, when, we, when we first declared uh, GCQ or ECQ. Mm-hmm. Some of them did not know whether to ask their people to work from home. Are the people equipped to work from home? How do we do some testing? What are the contact tracing and so on and so forth? Some of some organizations are more quick than the others. So I, I know this uh, BPO technology organization, when even before President Duterte declared uh, GCQ in Metro Manila and later on enhanced to, you know, enhance ECQ or ECQ, they have already very, very quickly and very nimbly asked their people to work from home. And they provided the computer and laptop to set up from home and the connectivity such that when they actually, when, when Duterte actually said that you know, we are having this quarantine, they are more than ready to support their clients. And the kind of uh, action that they did for their employees it's a great branding mechanism and marketing for them as well. They showed how they care for their people and they, how they care for their clients. And in fact, they turned it around to make it as a business because what the platform that they're using, so their clients said, so what are you using as a platform? Can we, can we use that as well? So they use that as a new product, as a new business product, and they have earned from it. So instead of them... Uh, instead of their revenues going down because of the pandemic, it actually went up 
because they use and they leverage the situation uh, to their advantage, which is a great growth mindset perspective. And instead of wallowing because of the effect and impact of the pandemic, there is a greater and stronger resilience, so to speak. And, uh, uh, you know, for people, and now from a personal perspective, I know some of us might be, again, losing job. Uh, some of us would have experienced some pay cuts. Uh, and, and, and some speakers, of course, might not have the capability of having that uh, usual face-to-face on-site uh, opportunity. And that would have impact to their to the livelihood as well, right? So, so people with growth mindset, only because they are the ones that are focusing on effort, but not also focusing effort because when you focus, it gives you time to breathe. It gives you time to reflect and it makes you kinder to yourself as well. So there is self-compassion that is at the core of a growth mindset because you don't see yourself as a failure, much like you don't see yourself as already a success because it's a growth and process. You become kinder to yourself you become more, you're cutting yourself more slack, so to speak, because you know that this is not your only chance. There will be another chance. There will be another opportunity. And when that opportunity comes, you will be ready and you will be better. And I think in this time, more than ever, we should be kinder to each other, but we should also be kinder to ourselves. Yes. So that, that is what we need. A bit more kindness and a bit more generosity for each other and for ourselves. And when you have a growth mindset, there is definitely greater op- openness to novelty and creativ- creativity because you're not afraid to try out new things. Of course, all of this is in the context of measured risk mm-hmm. and calculated risk as well. So as mentioned, self-compassion. So it's growth mindset is great for wellness because it also shows your vulnerability. So how right now before our concept of a leader is we put them on a pedestal. Uh, yes. we, we try to see them as, oh, they are better than me. They will not create mistakes. Uh, I'm sure because they're smart, they're strong and great. They're heroes. But right now, our modern day heroes and our modern day leaders, the more effective ones right now, are the people who are actually not afraid to say that I have committed a mistake and I, I will own that mistake and I will learn from that mistake. It makes them more human and it makes them more authentic. And at this day and age of transparency, where you cannot hide anything, you would have to be transparent, authentic, and true. And that's part and parcel of having integrity. Because you cannot, you, you cannot hide a lot of things right now. Whatever you probably did, Howell, two weeks ago was posted on some social media, right? On your Facebook, on your LinkedIn, whatever. People will see whether, whether you posted that or someone else posted mm-hmm. that. People will see the true Howell, more or less. We have a better grasp now of what Howell is really as a person than what our leaders were about 50 50 years ago when there is no social media, when there is less transparency, when everything is veiled uh, under uh, a cloud Mm -hmm. of, of mystery, so to speak. So with that, I know that we are already... um, in our time, it's almost 10 minutes before we call it uh, a wrap up. I would like, just like to invite you because I don't want us to go out of this discussion with all of these theoretical mindset instead of having growth mm. mindset, right? So how do we apply this personally? Are you being hard on yourself? Are you not giving yourself enough chances, second chances, third chances? Because truly you are worth a second and a third chance. We are, yes. Relational. Do you 
so maybe we can say it from a personal spouse perspective, whether that is in a coaching or mentoring perspective, or also in, 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 the, in the office, whether that's a manager subordinate relationship. How do you motivate your people? Do you actually tell them, Howard, you're smart, you're great, you're handsome, you're a great speaker? Or do you say to them, I like the way that you have put this together. There seems to be a lot of effort put into this, a lot of thought. I like that how you prepared things. It's very well presented. Uh, you please continue doing so. So how do we change that kind of dynamics for us to create that kind of a growth mindset where we thrive not because we are smart. We thrive because we are wanting to be smarter. Mm -hmm. And that's a big difference. So how do you also, will you still implement IQ tests when you hire people <laughs> uh, so that's the question of course it's ultimately it's the decision of the business right mm. but where is the heart and where's the vision and where's the soul of the organization when you want to see the the growth mindset so if i may just i know that we're running out of time but when i was in Citibank, i did my personal study because as you know, uh, I, I, I am full of biases. I would admit, admit that for the sake of vulnerability of authenticity. <laughs> how I had my own biases when I was uh, the vice president for Citibank and corporate operations and technology. I was biased for hiring uh, UP Ateneo La Salle, for example, right? So for the first three years that I stayed there, I just focused on hiring UP Ateneo La Salle. And later on, where there's already dearth of talent, I started exploring other viable universities. So I did a study. We, I called it uh, the Illustrados versus the Indios Bravos. So the Illustrados are the people who graduated from UP Ateneo La Salle and those who graduated somewhere else. And I did a historical study on their performance rating. What is their average overall performance mm. rating? How many got promoted? And how many stayed in city? So guess what's the, what, what's the result of my study? Was it more favorable for the Indios Bravos, who those who graduated from, uh, from the other universities versus from the top three so-called universities? If you were to ask me, I know the answer. Right. So let me provide that answer for both of us. So I was actually surprised, and that actually shattered my bias because those people who graduated from the other universities actually had higher average rating. They were True. promoted more. Yes. They stayed longer yes. in city, in that organization. Mm. So it goes to show that these, these graduates from the top universities might have been labeled as smart or graduate from the top university versus these people who had to exert a lot of effort to prove themselves and to work really hard so that they can learn and they could also be similar to their counterparts from those universities. So, so that is, you know, and, that, and that's an experiential and empirical uh, learning uh, from me. So I would like to ask our people and the audience as well, how can you apply that growth mindset in your own way of assessing, in your own way of developing people? So just to wrap things up, some of you might be familiar with this picture. Howell, would you know this person? I'm not into history or arts or politics. Oh, or... So this is in the arts. This is in music. So this mm. is Mozart. Uh, well, I, I didn't know that it was his face, but I, I love okay, his so this, music. So this is Mozart. And okay. we know that Mozart is a, it's a prodigy. He's a prodigy. Prod, prod, prodigy. 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 And at 10, he's already, you know, uh, tinkering with the piano, doing a lot of wonderful music. But, you know, he might be good at tinkering with the piano, but he was not able to compose a good symphony. He was only able to compose his own composition, which is passable to the king, uh, mm -hmm. after 10 years of practicing. So it's not just organic talent that is needed to create masterpieces. You really need heart, soul, dedication, blood, sweat, and tears. So it's not just pure talent that is needed. It has to be a combination of both. 
Michael Jordan. I'm sure you know that, right? I, I, I'm sure you recognize him. Did you know that Michael Jordan did not pass the varsity test? He was not even accepted at the universities applying for as a scholar because he did not cut, made a cut for the varsity. But who is the greatest basketball player now? If you were to ask anyone who is familiar with NBA, it's simple, it's Air Jordan. So why did he, you know, why is the greatest player not an innate basketball player? He's short for basketball player. He's not the tallest, he's not the strongest, but he's able to do so. And I'm sure you, some of you might have read Malcolm Gladwell that he did a lot of practice shooting 10,000 times before he's able to perfect his shot. So a lot of effort put into it. And IBM, of course, it, you know, from server, they made their own transformation to become a service provider from server to service. And there's, there's a lot of change that was done by Lou Gershner, which is pivotal trans as well in the transformation because he brought the growth mindset leadership perspective in IBM where people are not necessarily treated for talent, where, they're, where you put people on a pedestal, so you're more of listening, vulnerability, getting feedback, and trying to change and transform personally, and that actually permeated to the whole organization. And that's why before we thought that IBM would already be a dinosaur and, and die with their servers. Now they are also one of the leading organization in cloud computing, which is the new technology for the future. Uh, so with that, how those are just examples, and I'm sure there are more in terms of transformation, but enough said, I would like now for us to just introspect a bit and try to do some action planning as our takeaway for this afternoon's session, Howard. So with that, everybody, give it up for Sir Eric Riego de Dios. Thank you. Wow. What an hour of informative inspiring session with you, Sir Eric. And it's amazing. There's this one person, Melchor Cordova. Sir Melchor says, the Illustrados versus Indios Bravo study was an interesting eye-opener. Which is great because it's, it's real. It's real mm -hmm. data. It's a study for three years. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a rare opportunity where you have that kind of information at your fingertips. And I'm sure for some of you who might already have that kind of uh, HRIS, it might be easier yes. for you to just pull out uh, some information and see for yourself whether that will also hold true in your own organization. Okay, so I, I believe our participants have tons of questions. So for the next two minutes, uh, we'll be pausing for a break. So Eric, you may want to grab maybe a bite or get a cup of coffee and Use that two minutes, dear participants, to type in your question because we can only accommodate so much of questions. First in will be the first read. And because of that, uh, type in your questions now. We appreciate, Sir Eric, your one-hour session, and we're excited for the second part. Don't go away. We'll be right back, everyone. <laughs> Every coffee needs a lotus.
And welcome back to our webinar with none other than Sir Eric Riego de Dios on transformations through growth mindset, learning and thriving through challenges. And this is the second part where we get to read the, the slide about helping our Kababayans during COVID-19 pandemic. Support our frontliners. It started in April. This is the third month that we're offering free sessions, learning sessions. And this could have not been possible without the cooperation of our dear experts from all parts of the world. And today, Sir Eric Viego de Dios, thank you for saying yes to this project, to this partnership. It's always a privilege and an honor, Howell. Thank you. And this is the call of the moment. So as we give back to our clients and as we pay forward to those who just signed up, and this was their first time to get to know Ariva Academy. We're giving you a platform to help other people out. Those who haven't done anything to you, anything good, and who are incapable of paying you back. So as you gain access to all our live webinar series for a cause, you may donate an amount to help families in distress. So here's the link at the chat box. Act now, click and donate. 100 pesos or so, if you have a million, why not? So it is in partnership with Arriva Achievers Foundation, Bayanihan Act 2020, or the coming together of heroes, and of course, for the Bayan Mahalinay. So Sir Eric, uh, are you ready now I, for I the Q&A? I have the growth mindset to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have that too. But sir, let's just read the people from different parts of, oh, let's read the places where our participants are from in the Philippines. Baguio, Batanes, Bulacan, Cagayan de Oro, Cavite, Cebu, Davao, Dumaguete, uh, General Santos City, Iligan, Iloilo, Benguet, Laguna, Nueva Ecija, Pampanga, Quezon Province, Rizal, Tabaco, and of course, NCR. Thank you so much for joining us. So, Sir Eric, uh, I'd like to read uh, a comment from Joanna Dizon. Before I forget, here are the mechanics, by the way. If you're from the Zoom room, please type in your question, not at the chat box, but at the Q&A box. And you may also want to do the live q a so press the press that button we want you to press the raise hand button and for our youtube live viewers type in your questions our technical team is monitoring your comments so from uh, joanna dizon as a leader how can you help a direct report who is exhibiting a fixed mindset on the other side how do you deal with your boss who has a fixed mindset? So um, it, a mindset is something that the person, it's, it's very personal. And the transformation also happens at the personal perspective. Um, so the best thing that you could do is hopefully to demonstrate the growth mindset through your own behavior. Mm. And hopefully that will also permeate, especially if you now have uh, your 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 direct subordinates would have the privilege of actually modeling, observing you, because whether you teach them or not, doing is actually the way that they will model you when they see you mm. do that. And, and you know, growth mindset begets growth mindset. When you set up a meeting, for example, focusing on the behaviors of people instead of labeling them, it becomes a more conducive and inclusive environment for everyone to thrive. So for example, um, and, and I'm sure many of the organizations are already doing this, we operate not, not by labeling people, but we operate by focusing on SBI. So S stands for the situation. What mm -hmm. is the situation? What is the behavior elicited? Mm -hmm. B stands for behavior. And what is the I, the impact? So situation, behavior, impact. That's In a way, you focus on what was observed, 
what what is the action rather than labeling or putting a person in a box. Um, so maybe by a approaching it in that way and coaching your people in that way and also explaining to your supervisor in that way, they will get the drift of that growth mindset and hopefully that will permeate across because you cannot necessarily impose that. Uh, otherwise, some organizations actually institutionalize that and place that under uh, their leadership development program. So there will be more awareness so again, this is really more awareness, but the actual adoption and the actual display of behavior would really depend on the people. Because theoretically, how will I know that most of us will be on the same page? But once we're out there on the floor in the operations, mm -hmm. the tendency is to revert to where our status quo was. So it's really, it's really necessary for us to always be mindful. That's why emotional intelligence and self-awareness is the buzz right now because mm -hmm. it's important uh, for us to really transform ourselves because without, without policing ourselves, we will always regress to where we used to be. And you know, it's progress, it's not perfection. So we just take it a day at a time and a step at a time. Thank you, Sir Eric. Now we have teachers who are viewing us and watching us right now via YouTube live stream. Aisha Aguined, Ma'am Aisha Aguined is watching at Angelico J. Medina Memorial School with co-teachers and our school principal division of Iligan City. Hello, so, Ma'am. Hello, hello, teachers hello, teacher. from Iligan. Thank you for that. And Nerissa Pilapil is also saying good afternoon. Anonymous attendee is asking you, sir, may I know the title of that book Oh, and the author? Thank yes, you. the title of the book is Mindset, The Mindset. New Psychology of Success. It okay. is by Carol S. Dweck, PhD, okay. uh, professor from the University of Stanford. Stanford. Oh. Thank you, sir. Alvin Soriano, I think taking a growth mindset implies a level of risk tolerance. One cannot take a new challenge and have the willingness to go through mistakes without taking risks as opposed to staying within one's comfort zone. Plus, of course, there's a need to invest resources for exploration. What do you think? Oh, I, I think, I think in alignment with, with what you have said. Um, because right now, especially this in, the, in this day and age of our pandemic, I think who betted well actually earned well as well. So you remember the, the, the example that I mentioned earlier on about this BPO slash technology organization who acted very quickly, provided investment because they did many, many people did not have a laptop or a computer at home and connectivity. So there is definitely an investment there. But did they recoup their investment? The answer is yes because they package it as a new product that they sold and they earned from it. So having said that, there is a certain environment where growth mindset will really thrive. And it's not necessarily uh, how well uh, a black and white, because mm -hmm. even us would oscillate between growth and fix because it's it not necessarily, we cannot fix on, on growth mindset and fix on fixed mindset. Uh, it's a human tendency, and of course, uh, the businesses would have to act with a lot of prudence as well, especially if you're in a very conservative environment. Uh, so this, this, this theory would actually thrive more likely in, in a startup organization, in a technology organization, and, and by the way, that's a technology organization that I mentioned earlier. Mm, yeah. So... Uh, if you're in, in Silicon Valley, for example, and you're still in Apple, if you're still in Google, for example, I think those are the kinds of environment where they provide a certain margin uh, for mistakes. But the, 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 the key there is fail fast mm -hmm. and move forward. And I think that's the kind of culture that they have built. So you have to create that kind of culture where the growth mindset will also thrive and become more beneficial for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It reminds me of the book by John Maxwell, 
feeling forward. You, you have to feel it forward. You have to feel it forward. So every after a mistake, you learn, you grow, and you stand up, uh, well, a step uh, closer to your dreams. Correct. And, and not repeat the same mistake. Right? Not repeat the same mistake. Thank you, sir. Anonymous attendee. Oh, well, let's go for a live question via Zoom. Antonio Alvarado, sir, please come in. Sir Antonio Alvarado, are you here now? Zoom live question. Okay, we're, while we're waiting for Sir Antonio Alvarado, can we proceed to the next question at the Q&A box, Sir Eric? Sure. How do you train yourself to have a growth mindset in this world where we always compare ourselves to those who are already successful? <laughs> oh, man, man, no, that is so true. That is, uh, uh... A, a trap that is, uh, you know, the society has actually imposed upon us, where we are pitted against each other, um, and, and you know there are contests. That's why there are contests. We are uh, compared and measured as as opposed to another person. Mm. At the very core of the growth mindset is actually your transformation. So this is a new theory, not necessarily new, but new way of actually measuring ourselves. So let me just go back to my stint in. The, uh, Baker McKenzie Global Services in Manila, and, and right now we don't have uh, a performance management where I I give you a one two three four five rating. Mm. We we are done with that. We don't do that anymore. We measure you based on your overall output and based on how you progressed from last year to this year. You are comparing yourself against yourself from a certain point in time. So remember, the fixed mindset is a snapshot of you at a certain point in time. And that defines you forever. Mm. Whereas a growth mindset, we can make use of that IQ test, for example, and then test you again later on. Are you still there or did you improve? Yeah. And that's actually the measurement of, of the growth mindset. And you know, it's a pitfall. Uh, of comparing yourself against others, and, and that's what society has taught us. But I think the more humane way of measuring ourselves in terms of progress is compare ourselves from our past version of ourselves. Thank you, Sir Eric. Anonymous attendees asking, how do you motivate a staff who seems to have a fixed mindset and has been with the company for a long time already, more than 10 years? Oh, it, it's a very hard question and definitely it's a, I don't provide a very prescriptive answer to that because there are a lot of variables that might be permeating across that situation. But, but definitely it's, it's about culture. It's about the way people manage him or her and the way mm -hmm. that we interact with him. So as mentioned earlier, a growth mindset begets a growth mindset. If everyone in this team is operating in that uh, platform or perspective and you operate as well in terms of your dealing with it. So I don't know how you are also talking with that person and are you focusing on his effort mm -hmm. rather, than, rather than his label uh, of himself. So perhaps if we continue on and of course we, we also have to put that growth mindset that we, we will say that this person will change because this is the way that we are also treating this person. Uh, so we are also not labeling this person as the end product. It's a yeah. journey. Thank you, Sir Eric. Uh, anonymous attendee, one anonymous attendee is asking you, what is your advice for people who have been struggling to take failures as a learning experience? So, so again, it's, it's, it's a lot of, because it's mindset, it's how, what society dictated upon us, maybe it's also brought about by the way we're brought up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's exciting, uh, even if it's not a new theory, uh, my, the mindset theory is not new because it's 25 years already. Yeah. Uh, but still, there's a struggle in applying it because society actually has a different frame of mind and frame of measuring ourselves and and that that's why more and more people if you and more and more people would read more and more people would practice it will hopefully become more and more a norm and a more and more 
part of our culture, especially in the, in the HR community. Um, so it's a personal transformation. And if more people would transform, it would hopefully be a cultural transformation. I agree with you, Sir Eric. And if I may, I believe we can trace this back to the time of Adam and Eve, when Cain and Abel would offer their burnt offerings to God, and God would only would only favor that of Abel, and Cain would feel like a failure, and it, it brought out the worst in him. I mean, maybe that is a a real a real story, or this could have been uh, well thought of Moses, but. It happened, and it's still happening now, 2020, that siblings are in rivalry, that if the brother, the older brother is a success, the younger brother is pressured to be a success as well. And if not, they would be deemed as failure. So I like that you're, you're bringing up labels as one of the culprits and one of the reasons why people seem to be too hard on themselves. Fredemina Fermin, how do you encourage standard employees to take a risk and move out of their comfort zone? <laughs> so it's a, a lot of questions, How well, I think it's all about uh, not just mindset, because mindset is a personal uh, transformation. It's mm -hmm. really, I think it's a, more of a cultural uh, transformation and cultural transformation from an organizational perspective. Mm -hmm. And leadership has a great part in transforming the culture. So first, I think if there is a growth mindset, maybe as part of your leadership program, mm -hmm. if you believe it, if you can influence it, uh, if you can socialize this with those deciding uh, managers or what, what kind of program your leadership development would have. And even as, uh, as, a, as a general course in your overall curriculum, I think awareness would pave the way to uh, hopefully eventual transformation because if people don't know this, then how could they apply? Again, belief, action, growth. Yes. So again, bag. Bag. that's a bag. We can, we can start with e-education, e-bag mo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess there's, a, I, I believe a lot in education and I'm happy that many uh, teachers are participating in this session because I think Education, whether that is in school or in a corporate setup, would really be essential in the transformation of our society. And shout out to the public school teachers. As well. Because I also am a product of public school, elementary and high school. I, I am a product of, of, of a public school, elementary mm -hmm. and, and college. Yeah, yeah, me, elementary and high school. Okay, Cromwell Maestrado for uh, the live Zoom question, sir. Sir Cromwell, welcome back. Hello, sir Cromwell. I like the car, by the way. The? The car. Yes, hello, 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 sir. Sir. hello, sir Cromwell. Welcome back. I love the I car. So. It's good to see you again. <laughs> You're, I see that he's still practicing his... Uh, we love your car. We love your car. <laughs> that's, that's a prop, though. Mm. Yeah. Question, sir, Cromwell? Yes, sir, Harwell. Well, talking about education, I, I think well, I have overheard earlier about the new normal or the next normal for education, which is transformational uh, growth mindset. And I, I believe that part of growth mindset is the emergence of agile learning. Uh, I think everybody's familiar with agile learning, which is uh, totally different from learning agility though. So in this generation, how can institutions or organizations adopt uh, agile learning and also become a great impact for transformational change throughout the organization in general. Thank you, Sir Cromwell, for the question, Sir Eric. Uh, thanks, Cromwell. Um, I might not have the monopoly of truth or answer to this <laughs> because I think it's really beyond, uh, beyond the overall discussion that we have had. But if I may just offer my own uh, perspective into this, as, uh, as, as you can see, Howell, the days of face-to-face -face learning has actually been tested now mm -hmm. and we have minimized 
actually the face-to-face -face learning and all of the platforms that will make ourselves more agile in terms of delivering learning is being, being tested right now. So in fact, this, this platform of, web, of a webinar is an example of agile learning. Uh, you can actually participate by just using your own mobile <laughs> phone, for example, right? Even when you're in bed or yes. with, even if you're in, in the comfort room, for example. So it, it, it's give you the, it gives you the ability of somehow on demand when you need it, where you would want to see it. And it's great that we're recording this uh, in YouTube and learn uh, in, mm. in LinkedIn and even in Facebook, uh, so you can backtrack the recording <laughs> and revisit it if necessary. So, so I guess at this day and age, this really has really accelerated uh, our need for more agile, more mobile, more in-demand learning, where where curriculum is actually customized on a per-person basis based on his own pace and based yeah. on his own timing. So there is, there is the, there, there's a silver lining in this pandemic that it actually tested us to explore possibilities from a learning perspective. So Cromwell, I think this, this COVID actually brought us closer to where we want to be in terms of agile learning. That, that's not exactly correct, sir. And of course, we're hoping forward that with the next normal, we say, we can adopt the agile learning methods and, uh, of course, the virtual, the virtual platforms that we are uh, using nowadays. Um, hopefully, it's, it's sustainable uh, in the near future. And, of course, it's consistently being used by, by practitioners like us and uh, all other institutions involved as well. Uh, we just have a quick, another quick question regarding agile still. Um, so part of transformational leadership is agile leadership. Do you have any thoughts about agile leadership? So I, I guess the agile leadership is also uh, a Ken Blanchard situation leadership uh, 2.0, mm. 2 right? Yeah. So we're, we're going back to it, maybe packaged in a different way, maybe also because of technology or platform. It only goes to show that there is a lot of agility that is needed from mm -hmm. our leaders right now, a lot of malleability, so to speak, and which is great and very much attuned to our topic because we don't, we don't label a certain leader and we don't box a certain leader. And right now, what we celebrate is a growth, mind, uh, growth mindset leader who is agile capable of transforming personally and capable of bringing that transformation to the organization. So I guess, you know, both, uh, both Cromwell and I were on the same page in terms of, you know, group mindset would actually be a contributory to what we want our leaders to be, which is an agile leader. Thank you so much, sir. That's, that's great. That's uh, awesome. Thank you for your thoughts about it. I appreciate it. And thank you for asking your question again live via the Zoom room. Thank you, Sir Cromwell, Maestrado. Thank you, thank you Sir Howell. Bye-bye. Thank Cromwell. So, so Howell, that, that's also a demonstration of a growth mindset, not being shy from, you know, expressing your thoughts. He has always been the best in recitation, <laughs> Sir Cromwell. Yeah, one of, one of the, since April, since, consistently. Uh, raising hand and uh, asking questions. So we thank you for that. Uh, from YouTube, Ryan Pons. Hi, good afternoon. Question, how do you develop a growth mindset and how do you relate it to grit? Thank you. Oh, I don't know whether that's... Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that. So what's the, what's the name again of the person? Ryan, Ryan Pons. Yeah, I, I could have probably asked him to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Because as, as, it's, it's great because the next book perhaps that I would like you to read is from uh, uh, from Good to Great by Jim Collins. But also there is a book by our very own Jonathan Yabut, right? Uh, who is from, from Grit to Great, right? Mm. Because it's, it's all about, it, it's, it, the framework is aligned in terms of 
you becoming a better version because of the effort that you put in and by the sheer perseverance and determination that you also put in. So there's a lot of parallelism in terms of this theory. Um, and there is also a need for us to be more dynamic and more, uh, but because it's self-feeding. When you believe that there is potential to improve, you, the more tendency that you'll act and action becomes growth. And growth also, in a way, feeds your belief of the other possibilities of what could be. So it's a virtuous cycle from belief, action, to growth, to belief again. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that actually is perpetrating and becomes a great grit cycle because it feeds on its own and becomes more beneficial and you become better and better because of your grit. But, but then again, nothing could be had if there is no action. So you just have to follow belief, action, growth, where growth actually contributes again to your belief. Thank you, Sir Eric. From Fredemina Fermin, how do you encourage standard employees to take a risk and move out of their comfort zone? Right. I think we discussed that uh, oh, how well earlier. back, yes. Anonymous attendee, Sir Eric, can you recommend books to read? I've read The Secrets and it's somewhat similar to the mindset discussion or the book The Secret. Right. So um, what I would personally would like you to look into is, again, aside from uh, the book of Carol Dweck, I would like you to read Start With Why. I'm sorry with why Simon with, Sinek, yes. By Simon Sinek, because I, I think this, this time provides us an opportunity to reflect, uh, not only from a corporate perspective, but also in a personal perspective. What is my personal why? What is my purpose and what is my mission? Am I still on the right track or do I need to recalibrate myself? So again, it's, it's, it's symbiotic because the growth mindset gives you the opportunity to reflect because you want to focus on your effort. What's my next step and how do I become better? Uh, but with that, you also reflect on, is this the right path? Am I made for this? Is this my purpose? So I guess let's make the most of this time by looking inwards, tune in, so that we can better move forward. All right. From... Uh... Um, and I'm sorry, and, and I apologize. I would also like to, uh, aside from mindset and start with why, at least for mm -hmm. now, another good book, which is the best selling book of all time. And if you have time, please do read the Bible because it does provide a lot of personal and even professional wisdom that we can use at any point in time. Thank you, Sir Eric. And if I may add, before uh, Simon Sinek's uh, Start With Why, there was Rick Warren's uh, Purpose Driven Life. Perfect. That's Perfect. also yeah. about why. Why do I yeah. do this? Why am I serving the wise? Mary yeah. Ann Hoson, how do you position the right mindset during these pandemic situations? How do we position? I, I guess it's... Um what the people would need right now is a lot of compassion, mm -hmm. a lot of generosity, and a lot of kindness. Um, and I think, you know, because that is what, where the need is, what, what kind of mindset would supply that need? Would it be the fixed mindset or would it be the growth mindset? And I think it's, 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 it's great that we'll be able to leverage this situation through the growth mindset, which can actually bring about greater compassion for the self, for others, generosity in terms of time, being there for each other, and also a lot of goodness. Uh, this, that is what we need. So basically more than ayuda of the government, yeah. more than relief goods, there is a lot of need for support that Hey, Howell, I'm thinking of you during this time. Yeah. I hope you're, you're well. And you know, Howell, that I am here. Just you know, give me a text. If, if there's anything I can do, I can just listen uh, to you. And uh, hopefully we can move forward better in this situation. I think that's the great positioning and leveraging the current need, the need to belong, the need to be supported, the need to be cared for. And that could be had 
through the growth mindset and not through the fixed mindset, definitely. Wonderful. Now, sir, for, wow, it's 4.30 already. Can you still accommodate just a question? Maybe one more and okay, we'll, sir. we'll wrap things up for how old. I know that's Anonym it's okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Anonymous attendee, thank you, Mr. Eric, for an hour of very inspiring forum. Mine is not a question. It's unfortunate that our government cannot see that seniors who are still able-bodied people are not allowed to expound the challenges of this new normal by limiting them, by just staying at home where they cannot share whatever growth mindset they have versus the fixed mindset of yesterday years. So, Sir Eric, what's your opinion on the sentiment of our anonymous attendee who happens to be a senior citizen who airs out the very sentiment of, of a lot of Filipino senior citizens right now? We, we can be very productive um, because Wherever we are, uh, I know there are restrictions and it's unfortunate. And some also able-bodied and very energetic young people, um, below yeah. 21, of course, mm -hmm. are also not given the opportunity and the privilege to go out. Uh, but having said that, that is where we have to operate because that's where our government believes where we should be and we should be respectful. But regardless of where we are, the adoption of growth mindset uh, is agnostic of your location, is agnostic of your age. And even if you're confined into your own premises, growth mindset can bring about a lot of discovery and a lot of opportunity. Um, so, for example, uh, Thomas Alba Edison, aside from, aside from the time that he went out to fly his kite and <laughs> do the, uh, the theory of electricity, mm -hmm. He is actually confined for most part of years inside his house, trying to develop thousands and thousands of bulbs mm -hmm. until he is able to find the right incandescent bulb. Mm -hmm. So I know that these are trying times and I, this could be very confining, but as long as you wear your growth mindset, I think you can be impactful and you can still prove your contribution and worth to society and much like Albert Einstein, Thomas Alva Edison, and all of our senior people who have actually contributed to the transformation of society and transformation of history. Thank you for the encouraging words that, of wisdom, Sir Eric Riego de Dios. And we call the last minute the takeaway. Well, we have learned so much from you over the first and our first hour and a half of Q&A and, uh, of course, lecture. If there's one thing you'd like us to ponder on before we go to sleep tonight, what will that be? Ponder on how am I become a better version of myself starting tomorrow. But start with your self-compassion because you cannot transform and change if you don't express your love for yourself. So tonight, give yourself some hug, mm -hmm. give yourself some love, mm -hmm. be grateful, pray a gratitude prayer to, uh, for those of us who believe. It's always inspiring and recharging to be grateful. It, it fuels happiness for us. And that actually fuels, when you feel that you are secure, that you are loved, then the more inspired you are to go out and venture into the world, even if you're still in the confines of your home, <laughs> and become more impactful to your, to your neighbors and to your family members even. So how change a life one day at a time and start to change yourself because wow. that's within your immediate control. And that's the silver lining for all of us who are confined right now. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Eric Riego de Dios. Wonderful. I, I love your, your the, the, the thoughts to ponder on. You know, Self-compassion, self-love. I love that. Philippines! Thank you, sir, Eric. And I uh, hope we can connect with you again soon and see you face-to-face -face and share the center stage live with thousands of our, our audience at the SMX Convention. God willing, in due course. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care.
Stay safe. Fair. You too, Sir Eric. Thank you so much. Everybody put your yes. hands together Bye. for Sir Eric. And as he fades out of the screen, fades in Miss Irish Malonda Samson. What can you say, Miss Irish? Thank you, Raul. Hello. That was a great session. That was very insightful, full of heart. Great presentation, Sir Eric. Rega de Dios. Thank you so much. And you know, Sir Howell, he never fails to say yes whenever we invite him for a session. Thank you all for always supporting Arriva Academy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Guys, please um, type in your learnings, your takeaways, share with us your um, learnings so that we can share it to our viewers as well. Okay, Sir Howell? So, firstly, I'd like to thank Sir Eric Riego de Dios for giving us a glimpse, a beautiful glimpse of, of transforming ourselves through growth mindset. Because one hour is never enough. An eight-hour session with him will never be enough. But what I appreciate, my takeaway, my very takeaway was how he has really transformed himself from a boy in the Botas, educated by the the state run well state state schools and going in and becoming a successful person that he is internationally recognized well i mean well decorated and awarded and yet remaining to be humble and that's the most beautiful thing that can happen to a person to grow and remain humble even after a lot of success has been experienced by such professionals I agree, Sir Howell. So before I share my takeaway, let me read first uh, the sharing from Alan Buddha. Growing is ageless and does not require age. That's his takeaway. Thank you so I, much. I love that too. Okay, mine is, well, this aligns with our tagline, of course, the Arriva Academy's tagline. It's all about being better. Yes. So continuous learning, continuous development. And of course, um, sharings about having a growth mindset. Um, this is really, well, upon realization, this is very beneficial nowadays. This will be a great tool for every one of us in coping with the challenges in this, in this pandemic, especially. Um, having grit and heart uh, to transform and adapt to change and not to, not to be afraid in taking uh, the risk. Is really vital nowadays, sir. I agree. I agree with you. Beautiful learning, Miss Irish. Thank you so much, Sir Howell. And of course, thank you as well for moderating our session today. I'm always honored that it's always a pleasure. Thank and I'll so be seeing you next week. See you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Bye bye, Sir Howell. Okay, so this is not yet the end of our e-learning session. I would like to acknowledge some of our following WinMet partners. Our official media partner, Art Plus Magazine. Thank you. Focus Media. Globotronics. City Advertising Ventures. Outcom. Elevate Media. Major sponsor, Pacific Cross Philippines. For win, win Partners, thank you as well to Brother, Faber Castell, Gluta C, Moringa O2, KFC, Mr. Donut, Tokyo Tokyo, Lotus Biscop, Boss Job, Sir Technology Inc., Finma Properties, Salary Jet, Ilawi Korea, Kitosan and Carpo Consulting, Enchanted Kingdom, Disperse. Thank you to Cosmotech Philippines Inc. Mindjom's virtual preschool program. To register, please call them at 0906-486-0710 or email them at disakanabe at mindjoms.org. If you want to place your ads here, advertise your company, your logo, your services, have a brand exposure to thousands of viewers to FB, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Zoom please email us at marketing at .ph. To stay on top of our insights and updates, stay connected on our vi and visit 
us on our social media channels. Please join the Arriva Academy Facebook group, like the Arriva Academy Facebook fan page, follow the Arriva Academy LinkedIn page, and visit us on our website. It's www.ariva.com.ph. And if you want to watch again the replay of our e-learning session with Sir Eric, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Arriva Academy and Arriva Talks. Again, it's Arriva Academy and Arriva Talks. For our upcoming online learning sessions, we would like again to invite you to register to our HR Virtual Summit PH Bounce Back HR. This is a live webinar series for our cause and we have invited international and local subject matter experts to share with us their wisdom in the HR field. We would like to invite you, please register. This will be on June 9, 3 to 4.30 p.m. This is a live webinar series for us and we have invited Coach May Soriano to discuss the session Coach with Apps. Don't forget, Tuesday, June 9. Another live webinar series for a cause, how to connect with clarity and confidence, building community in times of uncertainty and isolation. This will be discussed by Coach Carrie Phipps from Australia, June 10, don't forget. An e-learning masterclass from none other than Mr. Jonathan Yabut, how to manage the millennials in the workplace. This will be on Tuesday, June 16, don't forget, 4 to 6 p.m. This is only 799 per participant, and you will be getting one free ebook worth 249 pesos. Another e learning masterclass from Mr. Jonathan Yabut Work Smart, Not Just Hard How to Boost Your Productivity at Work. This will be on Wednesday, June 17, same time, 4 to 6 p.m., 799 per participant, plus one free ebook. Another e-learning masterclass, Prospecting, Cold Calling, Telephone Sales, and Closing the Deal. This will be discussed by Mr. Chris Randall, and this will be on Thursday. Don't forget, June 18, June 18, 3 to 5 p.m. Second batch of online selling from home, how to use FB, IG, and LinkedIn for your business. Guys, this is very timely, so... Please join us on June 24, 4 to 6 p.m., 799 per participant. Another e-learning masterclass, Crisis Management Strategies in Sales. Ultimate winning sales strategies during a crisis and beyond. This will be discussed by Mr. Coach, uh, for, by Coach MJ Tallon from USA, and this will be on Thursday, June 25. Don't forget to register. And if you want to customize an e-learning session for your team, for your company, please do reach me at 0916-695-4418 or you can email me at irish.arivaacademy at gmail.com. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Hope to see you again next week for another live webinar series for a cause. Again, this is Irish Malanda Samson in Arriva. It's all about being better, be safe, have a great weekend, guys. Thank you.